so today we have this great quilt I can't wait to show you. There's only two pieces to remember, a six and a half inch square and a two and a half inch square. So you can do that, right? right. Isn't, doesn't that make it easy, huh? Six and a half and two and a half. Cheers! Okay, this is my sister Patty. Doesn't she look cute? Thank you. I love all your buttons. Thank you. Cool. So um, no, I didn't sew them on myself. <laughs> so this quilt started from Patty. This quilt was hanging in my house for years. In fact, it even got a little, a little faded. And I was thinking, I was looking at that. Oh, we should make this for block party the next time. And wouldn't you know it, the very next day, Patty said, let's make that into a pattern. Yeah, we needed something new. And I designed it when we were doing the Irish chain. If you remember that boring pattern, <laughs> excuse me, it's classic, but it's just a, well, it's it just, it was 86. Can you 86. believe that? 86. You have to remember the century. It was 1986. <laughs> <laughs> and since I, I don't do boring quilts, I said, what can I do to make it more exciting? So I, I changed it and I named it the Shabby Chic Chain, but now it's just shabby. So. <laughs> Because it's been hanging around too it's, long. It's a little faded, and she told me that it smelled, so I washed it. <laughs> Was that good? <laughs> Teresa, I'm going to have Teresa come. This is Teresa, and I want you to be on this side. On this side? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Come over here. Yeah, I'll switch. Okay. Okay. Switch. okay. And you talk okay. That's good. Okay. okay, yeah, because I remember I've, I've been stepping in front of it. Okay, so that's the first one. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. We need to have a quilt catcher because I think we have one. That's fresh. Okay, are you going to be the quilt catcher, David? Or is it Brenda? Brenda? Oh, you stay on the internet, David, and we're going to pass this to Brenda. One, two, three. All right, you two. So, so after, well, let me say, after I did that quilt, I usually like to have one for quilt in a day. So I give the same fabric to Teresa, and she makes her quilt for quilt in a day. And the same. Same quilt. <laughs> And this one has not been uh, in the hanging. Oh, look at the difference between those. <laughs> oh my goodness. See what happens? Oh my goodness, that's hard to believe. Well, I remember the day that Teresa and I hung that so it was nice and soft in my living room. And so here you see there is a square. There's just a square and then beside it, there's a nine patch. And that nine patch has those little, okay, if this is six and a half, this has got to be two and, two and a half. This is your test. So these are little squares that are all matched coming off those big squares. Oh, let me hear it. Oh, and finished with a little folded border. This is like a one and a fourth inch strip that you just fold in half and just tuck it in between those two borders. So sweet. So sweet. So you want to see the back? Yeah. Beautiful quilting. Ooh. <laughs> you can really see it. All right. So now we got it all set up. You know what we're going to be doing with this. And OK, you can show the next one. Ooh. And in honor of Patty, we named the patter, pattern Patty Cake! <laughs> Patty Cake! Thank Actually, you. I think it was Orion and David, and we said, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Patty Cake. And she feels pretty honored. And the main reason is Patty Cake. What do you think the cake size is? Layer cake. Layer cake. Ten inch squares. That's it. But everybody calls it something different, patty cake. So this is just beautiful with all the colors in diagonal rows going down. Very, very bright, but very similar with the large square and the nine patch beside it. Good? All right, so now, okay, we're getting in there. I'm looking around. This is the one that I did, and I'm looking for my square. Ah! 
<laughs> my 10 inch square. And here oh. we have my 10 inch square uh, that I made. No. No, it was, it's a whole package of squares. Oh. I got it. We got it. I got it. I think it's like you. Yes, that's what I want. So this is the one that I did. And this is the square that I used. The squares I used is called Sweet Prairie. Isn't that nice? And this is very sweet. And it's really fun because the fabric rack from Riley Blake gave it to me Friday night. I made it Saturday and Sunday, and we got it quilted Monday. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> and it is. It's really fun. And so you can see that it's all scrappy. And um, I, I had sort of a plan. I started off with, like, gray and yellow. I love the yellow. I remember one time I actually said on TV, I hate yellow. And look what I did. <laughs> yellow border. It's beautiful. This one is quilted quite simply with crosshatch quilting, and it just really, I think it helps that whole feeling of prairie, you know, kind of an old-fashioned quilting design, and looks very, very soft, but I loved it. It's called Sweet Prairie, and this one I did. I actually did it, and look at the back. Isn't that cute? Little polka dot. So it's kind of simple. The, the way I did it, the layout is simple, but you should see, we just started going crazy as we went along. Okay, Brenda, thank you. Next one, I think this is Patty's. Yeah, you oh, want to show the yeah. cake? This one is so fun. This one, this one is from the kitchen, kind of like, I'm looking to see if they're up, I was oh, figuring they're down. upside down. Uh-oh. <laughs> It has a lot of little fussy cuts on it. It's really, really fun. So when you know Patty did it, because it has all those fussy cuts, but it, it has the little cupcakes in it, and you can see all of the words from the kitchen, more cupcakes. Here's a little coffee pot and coffee cups. It's very, very cute. Really like it. So from the layer cake, Kitchen Love, and when we do this, we're going to have one little two and a half inch square left. And so we did a patty pan. <laughs> a patty pad. <laughs> patty the pan is a squash. <laughs> <laughs> patty right? pan sounds pretty yeah. funny. But this it's looks really delicious. cute. Patty just did this for me. Um, when you cut these, you have little two and a half inch squares left. We took 25, five across and five down, and we added just a little bit of batting and backing and rickrack, and there's your pattern. Isn't that cute? And that one has the little kitchen on the back of it. It's it's really simple and fun to do, but we can't we we can't waste anything, right? And David did this one. Oh, I'm going to hold on to this one because you'll see this one coming up. Okay. And this is called Life is Sweet. Life is Sweet. Life is Sweet. Thank you. That's very, very cute. Oh, your need muscles. Oh, okay. okay. We're getting fancier. Okay. This is David's. Okay. So he loved it so much. <gasps> oh, is this beautiful? So you know the line? The line is forever love. Forever yeah. love. And David, you should come up here. You should be proud of this. Stand beside it. And you'll have to talk into Patty's mic and tell all about it. Or my mic, whichever one you want to do. OK, here it is. Here it is. So, so I was inspired by uh, Patty's water wheel. Um, her layout and I love the way she did her colors so I kind of mimicked it and I've been holding on to these um, layer cakes for a while and waiting for something to do and so um, after I made it I told Patty that I named it after her and I named it Ode to Patty because it was inspired by Patty's work. And I cried I was so honored because this beautiful? is my favorite quilt. I love it. it just to me it looks like a watercolor painting mm -hmm. the way the colors flow together so gracefully and this is queen it. size. It will fit on a queen size bed. It's beautiful. And there is a piece of cake in it for Patty. Oh. I switched these. Uh. So that's, <laughs> that's Patty's piece of cake. <laughs> well, 
It's in the real quilt, but we asked Mara to do a little desktop on it, and he switched the colors around. You'll never notice it in the photograph. And this is what David did with his patty pad. And he had little wide rickrack on two sides, and this is the stripe that's left over. Oh, great way to use leftovers, huh? Beautiful quilting. Um, Judy Jackson did the quilting. It is edge to edge. Because it's so busy, it's there. it really wouldn't be worth it to do designs. Edge to edge quilting well, on let's it. Let's do it in the back. Oh, let's do it in the back. You can see the back. It is really pretty. Beautiful. It feels nice and cozy, too. Oh, my gosh, it's getting cold already. Aren't we excited? Oh, Brenda, take that. Okay. We keep on getting fancier and fancier. Okay, so okay. now Patty did this one. Ooh, ta-da! Okay, kick out your corn. Wow, isn't it beautiful? Yeah. And so different. you want to talk about your design, Patty? Well, I thought I wanted to do something different, and I was I just sat down to think and visualize. Couldn't think of anything do so I just fell asleep and then I woke up and it popped into my head barn raising and these this was the um, layer cake from Moda it's French general I've had it for years and then I thought what am I going to do for the border I walked into this great quilt shop quilt in a day and they <laughs> had they had a, a French general that I thought oh now I can do my quilt and what I love about the fabrics it does come in uh, different values, and I just cut it up and I kind of laid it out in symmetrical pattern. And it, what I love about the fabrics, they all kind of remind me of some classic um, drapery or upholstery fabrics. Each one is unique. And I did a little fussy cutting. If you notice, the bees are all flying in the same direction. I guess they're all going to the hive. What do you think? Yeah. So either they're coming or going. So, um, <laughs> so this is the, uh, um, it's called Red Gardens. It's very French. Very French. Very, French. very French. French general. So take a look at these fabrics. Patty's been sewing in my sewing room, and now there's twice as many scraps laying around. <laughs> And I took all of the leftover two and a half inch squares from this quilt, and you will see this again in October. Oh. Whoa! Oh. So hold on to your scraps and all your little oh. two and a half inch squares. So the next one is also leftover from Patty's quilt from last time, from the roundabout. I don't know if you remember the colors we were using. Um, 10 inch squares, and they were just laying on the sewing table. Actually, they were laying everywhere. Let's be, let's be <laughs> they honest were. on. They were everywhere. everywhere. And so one morning I got up early and I just started cutting six and a half inch squares, and there were a lot of two and a half inch squares, so I started laying it down. And Patty came in in her nightgown. She said, I don't like it. I said, just wait. I put a few more, and each time she came back, I said, I really like it. And, and it, so it, it got better and better. It got better. <laughs> I love it now. Yeah. Yeah, I really like it too. But it is all just from, you don't have to have um, a whole layer cake to start with. It was just really fun to put all the colors together and then finished off with a green wider border. This is a little folded border right in here. Let me see. Did we get them all? Yes. Ah, what do you think? You like them? Like them? They're really good. So I'm going to move this away and put this here. This is really good. And I have to walk over to my table and show you how excited I am. Orion, oh, I'm so excited. You found an original Ruby McKim book, 101 Patchwork Patterns. Mine is in... Oh my gosh, it's just in pieces. But I'm looking to, I want to look for the date. I'm so excited. And I'm excited about the price you paid for it. 1931. 
Is that impressive? McKim Studios, Independence, Missouri. Apparently, then, they were their own publisher at that time. But it's really exciting. Look at this. And then it's been reprinted so many times. But this is a great... Pardon me? 100 and... Okay, what it was called before first. Um, McKim Studios. Designs worth doing. Yeah. Designs worth doing. Yeah. Designs worth doing. That's really cool. But see here it says published by McKim Studios, Independence, Missouri. And I love the the hard cover. Woo! Thank you. Where did you find it? Amazon. Amazon. Everybody's <laughs> gonna look on Amazon. And the price was right. So isn't the pattern beautiful? I love the way it's printed and all the beautiful colors. So it is rotary cut and AccuQuilt cut. I did my AccuQuilt class and they'll, that will also be out there um, on the internet. So look at this. This is what you're gonna do with your 10 inch square. You see the six and a half inch and then four Two and a half inch. Good? Mm -hmm. See this part up here? Guess what that's for? Patty pad. I said it right. Cool. Okay, and then you also have you have the the two blocks, the squares, the nine patch, and then around the outside edge, you have these rectangles and more two and a half inch squares that make the border around the outside edge. Okay? Good. So that's on page two, and three is Life is Sweet, and Keep on Going. There is your yardage charts for all different sizes. And we're finally going to get to the cutting because it's so simple. I want you to just see, you can stack up. How many, how many layers can you go through? Four, two, four, six. Well, stack up your 10 inch squares and just line up around the outside edge, right out of the very left corner. You're gonna take, I prefer the nine and a half inch square up ruler. You're going to cut a six and a half inch square. Now, there is the little um, pinked edge on the 10 inch squares. If you wanna include those, you can include them, but there is room. If you choose to just trim them off, sliver trim them off. So first you start with the six and a half inch square. That's easy. And look what's left. So if you use the nine and a half inch square up ruler, let me think, two and, two and a half and two and a half are five. So how about I just line up two and a half by five, layer cut up that way and slip those apart and just cut into two and a half inch squares like this and stack them up and then go up here two and a half by five and just cut those off okay these little pieces you can get rid of i don't mind get rid of that but look at this you can get another two and a half inch square. If you want to do the patty pan, but you could even do a bigger square. You could do like a three and a half. Ooh, that's the next project. Never know. But look, very, very little waste. And very fast. So these are the pieces that you need. You need to have four, two and a half, and um, one, six and a half for each one of them. And these are just a little bit extra. And then you do have to have background squares. And Teresa said she would, she would cut those for me. Two and a half inch background squares. That's on page seven. And up, oh, did you bring a strip? Are you gonna oh, let me? Oh, here, here. Background? Would you like this? Oh, that looks like oh, border. We, yeah. Oh. Is this what you want yeah. me to do? Yeah. That's what I want you to do. So you need to have a lot of two and a half inch background squares. 
And so Teresa is coming to my rescue with yardage and the big old shape cut plus because it cuts two and a half inch squares. Okay, so she's just going to put that on there. Have you seen this? That's my favorite when we need to cut. When we need to cut. cut strips. Okay, and she, Teresa is lefty, mm -hmm. and I'm right. <laughs> I'm righty. That's great. But you, you can just put because I need a room. <laughs> Fine. Push me right out of here. Okay. So, so she is trimming at zero because, see, we have to do this just opposite. The right people have to do it just the opposite. Okay. And well, you want me to start? No. You can, you're doing it. You're doing it fine. The reason that I like the Shape Cut, it's pro. pro. I said the wrong one. Shape Cut Pro is because it's only two and a half inch squares, and so you can't make a mistake. That's what's really great, yeah, right? True. So she is cutting hundreds of two and a half inch squares. Teresa is just showing off right here. <laughs> That's good. Hey, I put a lot of practice when I did the memory curl for my band, nine years. Oh, I yeah. I about 3,000 squares. Wow. 3,000 squares. Wow. Okay, and the big thing is that you need to keep your rotary cutter straight up and down. Mm -hmm. If you get it crooked, you, you don't get it through mm -hmm. the slots. Okay, next step. Next step, I will turn. Let's take this. And get rid of it. Can Oops. Can I just do it these? <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can step off towards Eric. Okay, so now she's just turned it the opposite way. And she, you can go ahead yeah, there. You could save on the fold. Um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're possibly going to use that, but she's going back to zero and just no, going there. I'm going the opposite way so I can save that. Uh, yeah, this okay. One. Yes, okay, so she's just going back across. Now we are going to have to sit and sew all of these, Teresa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a lot of layer cakes, huh? So it's just one layer cake or one 10 inch square package to do all the smaller quilts the queen size you do need to have two packages of 10 inch squares that's not bad huh it's going really good okay so now one thing that patty would have told us was to turn your lights all right side up because now except you can't even tell what's the right and wrong side on this one that works good right mm -hmm. Okay, and so just those, like just stack them up, and you are ready. Ooh, pretty good, huh? All right, so I'm going to let her stack up here, Patty. These, these are for you. Thank you. You're going to be our official Whoopee. layer outer. Okay, so... You have to lay out your pieces on your design wall before you can even go on. Okay, so now we have all our pieces cut. Six and a half, two and a half. Thank you, Teresa. That's okay. And we'll just get, just get rid of this. Okay, so now you're going to go ahead and skip over. The AccuQuilt cutting is on page eight and nine. We're just going to skip because we're rotary cutting. And now, this is the hardest part, laying out your squares, figuring out how you want it to look. So, Patty, just lay out the six inch, six and a half inch squares first. Oh, yeah. okay. Just the six and a half. All righty. So, we had this all done. Okay, so... I gave her is, a... Is this big enough if I leave? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so now I'm on page 10, and this is the top row. That's good. You're doing good. Good. And so don't look at those little four two-and-a-half-inch squares yet. Okay, so we'll have Patty take them off. Okay, All you did right. good. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's the first row. Okay. Actually, you only need two in the first row. So I think that this one is going to have to come down here, right? Oh, right. Oh, that's why. Okay. 
And now you're going to do the second row, which is just three of them. When you do your layout, all you have to do is start with your nine patch. You start with your nine patch, and we just put all these spaces in here. Okay, Ooh. you got it. So now you just duplicate these two rows, two in a row, and then three in a row. And then you repeat again, two in a row, and three in a row. That doesn't sound hard, does it? No. That's because Teresa planned the whole quilt for us <laughs> already. <laughs> and I think it's already half sewn too. This is looking good. Okay. So now you have put one more in and then you're going to have enough to go ahead and do the, do the rest. Yeah? Is that good? Okay, so you really need a design wall. This design wall fabric is called Headliner. Um, it's like the upholstery in, in cars, the upholstery in cars, headliner, and this is just mounted on uh, foam core so that you can glue it down, but it really works. And so now, Patty took the four two and a half inch squares that go around each color. Soundboard. 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 Oh, thank you. I said foam core, right? Soundboard. So we decided that we should put the stripes in the opposite direction because if you tried to um, match up your stripes, you might go crazy. And I, I don't yeah. think it'll work. Okay, so now she's building that one on the top. So where's your next one? Okay, good. So see how easy it gets once you're six and a half inch or down? It's like magic. That looks good. You're yeah. doing good. Thank you. Teresa, Teresa designed it. She designed she it. She did and, all the work. And this is really good. This is what Teresa did for us. She took a photograph and printed it out. Makes it really easy. Then if it, the wind blows, when we hang our uh, quilts on the design wall, quilt in the day, people walk past them all day long. And they're all falling on the floor over and over again. People stop to pick them up. But um, the, that is really helpful to do it. Okay, so if you do one more, do this little blue one right here. Put the four, okay. the four up. Now, I found out that when I laid them all out and I picked them up, I just like to have the prints. See, there's no background in there yet, right? Mm -hmm. No background. because. Once you start adding background, then you get a, a lot of pieces going on. So find something like the nine and a half inch ruler, the 12 and a half inch ruler, and then carefully, let's see if I can put this toward the bottom, this on the right, this goes up here, yeah. And once you take these and start sewing these, there's no way, as long as you have this straight, it's going to go back in place, right? So I like to assembly line sew because it just um, it just takes forever, <laughs> right? So now I have the pieces laid out for two of them. So now comes the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and put, there's only two here. Usually I put a whole row out and that works really good. Oh, Teresa, I need more. I know she left with all of here, them. Here, here. here. <laughs> we, we have lots of, don't There's worry. some on the floor. Don't worry. We all have. We always have lots of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why we're doing a new pattern with two and a half inch squares <laughs> in October. There. That's good. Okay. So if you want to keep on laying out, okay. only you have to watch me, right? Okay. Um, and before before we turn the pages. You know that there's that border on the outside edge? The border around the outside edge. You, if you take your 10 inch square, you can actually cut four two and a half inch strips. But I wrote the instructions for just three two and a half inch strips for your outside border, um, just in case you want to trim off that pink edge. And then you cut off a two and a half inch square and a six and a half inch square. So these end up going right around the outside edge. Okay, maybe 
Do you have some of those you could put in place, Patty? Which which ones? Um, the border and the outside. Oh, sure. I'll get, yes, I will do that next. Okay. <laughs> Let me check my pattern here. Good, you're See. doing good. You good. got it. I'm just looking at the picture. Okay, that's right. That goes there. Oh, there so, it is. So now there the, it is. these are different. Um, these are different fabrics. These are um, completely um, different. You can't, you have to start over with new ones. And then that very corner up there goes a white. Little, let whoops. me steal one of your squares. <laughs> okay, that's going to go right there. Okay. All right, good. Do you need more one and a half? Or, or two and a half? Are you okay? I'm good. You're good. Okay. I'm going to just pay attention to what I'm doing now. Yeah. Okay. So turn the page. Beep. You have to get the whole quilt laid out. On page 12, you see all of the pieces are there. And I'm just going to keep on going, starting to sew the 13, uh, the, the, tw the nine inch, the nine patch together. I'm looking at page 13. And I know I had a stiletto. Can't sew without it. Okay, so I do vertical rows. So you take the middle row and you flip it to the left. Yeah? And then you just pick up. And I, I like to just keep them sitting beside me so I don't get confused. Not to worry, I don't get confused anyways. <laughs> it just goes, oh my gosh. Okay. Teresa set up my machine with a little jumper scrap. So you just keep on going right down the, the left vertical row. Use your stiletto. So this is the second one. I have my sew straight on my sewing machine. I am addicted to it. It has a straight line for your needle and then a quarter inch line so you can use that so you get a good quarter inch seam. And it's slippery. It's, it's stuck on there with a 3M product that you can peel off. Okay, so watch this. See the line? And just guide it with a stiletto and my quarter inch foot on. Okay, so I finished the top one. Now, this is the thing. See, the second one is just exactly the same. So you just go ahead and pick it up and butt it right on behind. I think that um, if you can learn this um, assembly line technique, it'll go a lot faster for you. Otherwise, I used to always lay out my stuff and just run back and forth. I'd running from my sewing machine to my strips all laid out all the time. Okay, so now let's just say we did, now we have all the first two rows done, so just go ahead and cut it off. You have to take hold of the end, pull it back up to the top. Do, 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 do. Boy, I got scared. I thought it wasn't there. Okay, so now you can just go ahead, clip, and just put that jumper scrap in for the next one. And I like to take this stack just pick up the whole stack and put it in the bed of the sewing machine. So you don't have to keep on reaching over here. Just flip it there. Okay, it's easy. If this is a print, then this one beside it has to be a background. And you're going, okay, how you doing, Patty? I'm getting there. Wasn't you it are! Nice I started it, and I just get to lay it out. So background here has to be a print beside it, so you just pick it up. That looks really good. Yeah. I love the prints. Do you know the name of that line? What is that one? Uh, the... Duh, duh. I have no... What is it? The good life. Oh, it's of course, the good life. The good life. We have the sweet life, and now it's the good life. Life cool. just keeps getting better and better. Yep, that is true. I'm kind of glad that the 100 degree weather is over. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it might are. not be, huh? 
thought it makes me want to take down my 4th of July quilt and get up my uh, fall quilts. Okay, so I finished one whole set, and now I'm just going to flip, flip, flip on the second set, and it's just all lined up, and you just keep on going. So I'm going to kind of just put that there, clip it, and sew it later. How's that? So then you go back and you clip in between each one of the blocks. So now, turn the page. Beep! Boop! So now you're just going to go ahead and turn it the opposite way. And the seams are pressed toward the dark. That's pretty easy. Okay, this is my first row. Flip it. And just get it lined up. You're going to lock your seam toward the dark on this side and on this side toward the dark. So this little connecting thread is just as good as a pin. So it's just going to look like that and like that on both sides. Okay, so do you want to um, show anything on there, Pat? You want to tell? It looks really We're pretty. just running out of space. I don't know how much you can see. Did the camera uh, pick up the whole, the whole quilt? Am I? Um, I know am one I thing. You can go to that big flower. The this one. This one. If that one or this one. Oh yeah, go up there to that one because um, the first time you lay it out. You oh, might yeah. not like the position of the right. flowers. You want so, to show that? Yeah, so this is fun. You can play with them, and, and sometimes you can match, match fabric. It's a little, just a little adjustment there. Here, let's put the red one over here. Yeah, and then you can see the large scale just kind of falls into place. Yeah, that looks That's good. That's good. And point out your border around the outside edge. Oh, well, we have a four and a half and then a two and a half. And these are um, assembled. Uh, let's see if we have some little squares. Do you, do you want to sew, sew one together? Or you just, again, you oh. can stack in order. Yeah. And then uh, we'll put, actually, we'll sew this set of three and then three, and then alternate the four and a half, and then the piece set of three squares. And that makes our frame. Well, are these six and a half? I'm sorry, you're right. Two good. and a half by six. Yeah, I'm glad. We did, did that just as a trick just, to make sure you're listening. She was good. Yeah. The, and you were. Oh, I, I don't know where I got four and a half. I guess. It just, just out of my head. Okay, so now I've got, this is my um, nine patch, toward the dark, toward the dark on the outside, there and there, and then just go and put your iron right in the middle so that you press your seams out. And actually, they're going in different directions, so they will always lock. On this one, they're going in, on this scene, they're going out. So no matter how you turn them, they're going to work. Perfect. You can even go close on it, Eric. <laughs> Looks good, huh? Woo! Thank you, thank you. OK, so give me one of those. Um, give me that one right there. That This set of nine? Uh, the, OK, this. Oh, this. this. Yes. Oh, how about this one? This one? Whatever one. How about we do it in a row? So you okay. Can, so okay. show a your row. fancy sewing. Okay. So okay. it's not very hard. All you have to do, it's on page 15. You need to just take, there's two of them. So you just stack up two backgrounds. Isn't it easier not to have the backgrounds up there and keep on picking up all the backgrounds with it? It just gets really um, cumbersome. Okay, so then just take this and flip it right sides together and just use this do this quarter inch seam and then just assembly line so when we did this um, together patty and i had 
her original quilt laying on the floor and we put the pieces on top to make it really easy to do. But um, it, it was really fun. It was, the hardest thing is just to try to get all the fabrics. Okay, then you open that and this one comes next, one in the other side. And the good thing, you don't have to do any sewing on the rectangle. Good. But you have to get all of these pieces sewn, the outside border and the nine patch, before you can start sewing vertical rows on the quilt. And if you do vertical rows on the quilt, it's very, very easy. All right, and this time again, seams go for the print. Cool. Here, let me, let me press this one so you can put it right back in there. And I hate to tell you, but that's as easy as it gets, huh? Yeah. Is that easy? I love it. And you can uh, use up all of your... Um, okay, there go in towards the dark, just like this. Just clip them apart. Look how pretty they are. I love them. Okay, and this one goes back. And this one goes back. Easy. And all of the other ones will be all filled in with nine patch. And then all you just do is the vertical rows, top to bottom, like this. And it's in your book. You just turn to page, page 16. Your first border goes on and then your little folded border and there's illustrations right there. And just keep on going. There's David's quilt, Ode to Patty. Beautiful, so you didn't have to remember it. And the red garden and this is the best part go go to page 23 and there is patty 12 years old that's my mom and her red and turquoise kitchen and that recipe is her handwriting and i'm sure i know i could read it but i i didn't think you would be able to read it and so Patty loved carrot cake, and this is mother's recipe that she used to make her her carrot cake. For the patty cake pattern. I was supposed to bake one of those. I was too busy this weekend, <laughs> and I didn't get it done. Are you bummed? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. We had cake on Friday. Yeah, but you should eat cake. Eat cake. Have a good time. Thank you. <laughs> Woo!